Good morning, y'all. So pretty. Somebody asked me the other day um, what this was. It's 18 gauge. I get it 110 feet at a time. You can get it right at Walmart um, to hang your stuff. I forget who you were, so I apologize for that. Um, but the pack looks like this. 18 gauge galvanized steel wire, 110 feet, 25 pound, which is the weight that it allegedly will hold. Uh, it's, it's picture frame hanging wire. It's $4. It's at Walmart. Strongly recommend it. It's actually per inch less expensive than even your best clearance sale after Christmas on ornament hangers. Just, just saying. There's my little tip for the day. Mm. Nope, 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 nope. You guys can't see everything. I can't give away all the goodies. I just can't do it. You'll have to wait. What's going on, fish heads? Jen Cravassi, Jekyll Bates, and this is probably going to be the last one before I head to the East Coast to go hang out at the gathering and go see my family and all that good stuff. So this is your Jekyll Bates workshop update. It is Tuesday, the 29th of September, 2020. Um, for some people, it's probably still March 217th. I don't know. But it is a good day. The birds are singing. The sun is shining. That is a very loud bird. It's probably... Would you like to do the update? That's what I thought. Okay, but let's get right into it. I have got orders out this morning going to... Rick Robertson, Chris Ball, and John Connor. So, no, not the Terminator John Connor. But a cool name, nonetheless. I've got some of these going out. You guys probably saw a tease from Instagram, but the orders that are from Instagram through Catchco from that post that they put up for my stuff, um, I did get orders out of that. So, to Catchco, thank you guys very much for supporting your local 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 artists they're one of you know what they're one of the only major companies that heavily promotes like the underground work that um that anglers and small business folks do and that's they you know they've kind of capitalized on that over the years and this isn't a shameless plug for catch go as a matter of fact nothing is shameless about it they're really good people a few more to spray i've got some videos i need to put out for um for somebody else um, for the gathering, so let's get into what we've got. These, we've got an army green gill going out, and if it's a little glary, I give you the best light that I can, but I do have the roll-up open. It's like 65 degrees. Fall is my favorite season of the year, hands down, favorite season of the year. I love it. We've got these cool eyes, trippy little red eyes. That, you know, most sunfish have some variety of red in their eye. Um, standard bluegills sometimes will have uh, just a regular yellow eye or a dark kind of brownish yellow. We've got the breeding crappie. A little bit of green on the top of it. Got that little orange throat. Good little trigger there. And then we have the summer gill, which is becoming one of my favorite patterns. I've, I've got a few varieties of gill now, and a lot of them are going up on the web. Um, I'm not going to put the ultimate gill pattern on the website until after I come back from the gathering because I am going exclusive for the gathering with the large bull shads, the custom work on the large bull shads for the gathering in the ultimate gill pattern. So... That being said, you guys are going to see a version of that. Uh, we haven't figured out exactly which one we're going to do, but uh, you're going to see a version of that coming out. Uh, I want to say by Halloween, releasing the Ultimate Gill. So that's our that's our shoot for date. 
and I'm really excited to to be doing some stuff with these little baby bull shads. I love putting detail on tiny baits. It's just kind of my thing. Love doing it. But this is the summer gill, and it's got that beautiful tangerine on its breast and just on its tail because you know that they're getting ready to spawn. So that tail is going to get a little bit darker, which is why I've sprayed the tail. And I can't remember because it's the last few weeks. I was just talking to Bill Barton this morning. The last few weeks have been a real blur. Um, so I don't remember if I talked about spraying the tail versus not spraying the tail. I think that I did. And you know, that stuff's going to come off eventually anyways. Um, it just enhances the look of the bait in the meantime. But it does no harm to it and you're not going to clear coat it. So that's just my take on Because some people tape them off and that's fine too. Um, I find that the tape can leave a little bit of sticky residue on it. And you know that's something that I didn't mention to Mike. But I have noticed that some masking tapes, like the thicker ones, depends on what you guys are using, will leave a little bit of sticky residue and that possibly could hamper the movement of the tail. So I just leave the tails free and spray them. They come off in the water after a bit anyways. So those are the babies going out. This is the Hamilton Craw. And I keep evolving it too. Um, it's, it's actually named after uh, another artist who is an amazing muralist and street writer and sprayer and works with all things Montana and Iron Lack and it's just I, I kind of covet his position because he does a lot of stuff with illustration and animation it's just super cool work that he does so Andy Hamilton uh, him and his wife Inga who is also a beautiful beautiful artist with tapestries and works with textiles and oh man just good stuff but they're in Ireland, so I do have some heritage in Ireland. They are not family related, but they're just friends that I've known for a few years through another artist of mine back in Maryland, a um, good friend of ours. So that is the Hamilton Craw, and that's why the Hamilton Craw got its name from my buddy across the pond in Ireland, Andy Hamilton. Good dude, and you guys got to check his work out. I, I'll, I'll find a link and send it. He, he just had an installment done. Recently, he, he gets a, a, lot, a lot of installations. I know, I'm off in the weeds now, but I'm thinking about his work. I'm going to link it below for you guys to check out because if you're into any kind of murals or street art or tagging or graph or any of that kind of stuff, which I'm really, really into, I love doing it, um, check him out. Anyways, that's, that's my little thing on the Hamilton. Squeaky chair, Tuesday morning. Grim Reaper. This is part of Rick Roberts, and so is this. Uh, Rick's got a 10-piece that I'm featuring now. The other two, John and uh, and Chris, have these baby bull shads um, from Instagram. So this is the Grim Reaper, and this is on that Schultz Mega Co. We say Co because it's, well, you know, it's not Mega, but it looks just like it. And it actually swims really well, too. Another example of gill through, and you can see this is clean as a whistle. Does very, very well. Swims good, walks good, chugs good, spits good, great flow, and nice and clean in those vent water through gills. Same with this little deal. This is a similar, um, not designed after Mega Bass or anything like that. This is its own entity. This also swims well. It's a little bit lighter weight. Um, it doesn't have a moving ball in it like this one does. These have got BBs that move around. This one just has a steady weight kind of back of the middle so that it pops up when it's in the water and then it'll move forward. This one moves pretty well too. I like the movement in this one a little bit better, but this one stays stable. It does walk well um, and, it, and it does sit up in the water column really well. This is the Drogon. This is House Targaryens um, for the throne. And if you want to check out the work, I'm gonna to have to link a lot of stuff below, which I don't know if I'll even have the time to, but um, I got some recognition from HBO a couple of years ago when uh, Game of Thrones was still going on. They never expected to see anybody doing fishing lures <laughs> after the houses and stuff like that and not directly rip off, like, you know, put stickers or any of the insignia. So I was able to, to get some recognition for that. I think I even got into their top 20 on the designs and stuff for the art that came out of that show that people were just like really into creating. A lot of really good artists did some stuff for that. 
Um, but I got a unique creative nod from from HBO and Game of Thrones from that family. So that was really cool. I love Drogon and I love these eyes. If you guys can see the eyes really well in this one, I think you guys can. If I'm looking through the monitor correctly, um, these are from Jetson. Lure eyes right back there. Um, these are his five millimeters fits in this. I know that most of the custom guys are trying to shy away from five millimeter. They're tiny. They're really tough to work with. Uh, but it's nice when you can still find them on the market at five millimeters. Um, this is just perfect for this House Targaryen eye, which is the house insignias are black and red and white. The mummy. It's getting to be that time of year. And this is a gauze wrap. If you guys want to see stuff like this and, and me do them uh, when I come back from Virginia, I'm, I've got some really cool ideas in store for spray sessions for this fall that I'm going to roll out when I get back. Um, and, and I appreciate y'all's patience with orders. I'm busting out as many of them as I can. Today and tonight is my last day to actually do orders. Tomorrow I've got to pack and get all the stuff for the gathering set. And then 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm on the road Thursday morning. Um, I, uh, yeah, Thursday morning I'm on the road. Yeah, this is the end of September. It's This year, as bizarre as it's been, has flown by. But I'm actually using gauze wraps. This might have made... I'm trying to remember if this is one of the ones that I did. I've got a hack out there. I got two video hacks. And one is four lures and two minutes. I think this might have been on my first hack vid. So go look for these things. They're all in playlists. Uh, if you guys scroll down to my playlists here on this channel, you'll see what's going on with that. This is that wildfire shad pattern. With those cool eyes. And good layering on that. A couple of different greens in there with some black underneath. Threw that little mesh wire down. And that is that. Moving right along, this is the extra sexy shad. And you can see that there is some really cool light neon blue, which is a blend. So this is mostly white. The lighter blues to get this really cool. This is even lighter than the sky blue that's out there and it's a little bit creamier. It is an FW ink with an opaque sky blue. I think it's just time for me to do some more color mixes with you guys. I've got so much that I want to teach you guys this fall and winter when like everybody's thinking about hunting and not fishing. But this is that extra sexy. It's got that gold overlay on the scale pattern just a standard webbing scale and yellow eyes and a good bit of detail in the cheeks and that's just a real light spray and that detail black magenta we've got some zombie-ish type stuff Rick also asked for the walking dead and here's the cool thing about, and also this is the Dire Wolf. Um, he did House Targaryen and the Pop, and he wanted the lipless in um, House Stark with the Dire Wolf. So the cool thing about when I'm waiting on big blank lures to come in, which I'm waiting now on uh, a big lipless order to come in, is that I upgrade you guys. So these are actually really good. This is it's sort of like going to the car lot when you're at the airport and they're out of compact, so you get that free upgrade into the like sedan level or whatever. It's the same principle. I'm upgrading you guys into better lipless. That's a mockingbird. It's getting lippy. But these are the dire wolf and then the zombie, the Walking Dead series in blue and in red. And I really like the way they came out real pretty and then what I'm using to shade I'm doing some extra shading on the inside of these as well and that is the Tom Gores or Tim Gores it might be Tim Gores I don't even remember it's a Gores it's a Createx but it's the Bloodline the Bloodline series of paints is really really good for doing zombie-ish type stuff and uh, you should check those out I think there's a link if there's not hit me up in the comments and I'll make sure that you guys get that link but there are your zombies. Again, this is a 10 piece that's all going out for Rick. Last but not least, the powder. 
which is one of my all-time favorite. I love spraying this because it's such a natural combination for fall and early winter. It's after that last final molt has gone on with the crawfish. They get that deep red because their food structure is a little bit different in the fall and they can kind of camouflage themselves. And that is all the news I, I, that I can think of right now. I'm sure there's more. If I think of something, I have a chance to throw you guys another vid before I get on the road, then I will certainly do it. And you have my word, I'm going to vlog at the gathering. If you guys are swim bait heads or junkies or anything like that and you want to get into the gathering, it's in Lenexa, Virginia. It's October the 10th with a tournament on the 11th out of the Chickahominy River. It's at Rockahawk Campground. I don't believe that there's a fee. There's a ton of vendors that are listed on the Swim Bait Universe uh, Facebook page. So check that out. A lot of cool, cool, cool stuff. Uh, a lot of baits, a lot of custom stuff, a lot of small batch that you don't get to see. And I know that there's going to be some killer brand new stuff that nobody has ever seen before coming out at this show. So if you can get to Virginia, get to Virginia on October the 10th at the gathering. That's all the news that's fit to print. Thank you guys so much for hanging out on the channel with me this morning. It's good to see your smiling faces. And I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.